Welcome to Ozeki's How to Develop IVR with Ozeki VoIP SDK Tutorial Part 3. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a multi-level IVR controlled by DTMF buttons. We are going to make an IVR system which is able to read a text message by pressing button 1. By pressing button 2 we will hear a sample MP3 song and if we press button 3 we find ourselves in a lower menu level. This level has its own greeting information message and we can control it by using DTMF buttons as well. By pressing button 1, the system transfers the call to the added number and with button 2, we can go back to the main menu. Open the blind transfer IVR example code which you can download if you click the link below and select the call handler class. We are going to modify the source code to create our multi-level IVR system. Find the call DTMF received method and change the case tree of the switch statement. Delete the blind transfer section because we will use it in another class. Then call and also create the lower menu method. In this we are going to call the methods of the class which handles the lower menu level. Unsubscribe from the DTMF received, the call state changed and the greeting message timer elapsed events. Now we are going to make an object from a class called new call handler. It is for handling the call in the lower menu level but this is not exist so create the class with the call parameter and call a start method with this new object we will create this method soon if we get this open the new call handler class first add some using lines to the class these are the same what we used in the call handler class. The media, the media handlers, VoIP and timers. After this create some objects. The iCall type call object, phone call audio sender, media connector, audio handler, the completed event, the string type blind transfer number variable and the greeting message timer. The constructor of the class is the same as the constructor belongs to the call handler class. The parameter will be the call that make the basic setups. Subscribes on the greeting message timer elapsed event and set the interval of the timer. After the settings of the constructor, create the start method. In this we need to subscribe on the call state changed and the DTMF received events of the call. Then start the greeting message timer and call and create the start greeting message method. If we start the greeting message, then we need to dispose the current handler and start playing the message by using the text-to-speech class. The parameter of the method is the actual message. In the dispose current handler method we need to check that if the audio handler is not null then disconnect it from the phone call audio sender and dispose the audio handler. Then create the text-to-speech method which is exactly the same as the text-to-speech method of the call handler class. Create a text-to-speech object, subscribe on the stopped event, connect the audio handler to the phone call audio sender and finally add and start the text. If the text-to-speech stopped, then start the greeting message timer. After this, set the call state change method. If the call state changed to in call, then start the greeting message timer. And if the call state is transferring, 
then dispose the current handler and stop the greeting message timer. In the DTMF receive section set that if we press button 1 then transfer to the added number if it not 0. By pressing button 2 we return to the main menu level with the help of the return method. Create it and in this method we need to unsubscribe from the DTMF received event. Dispose the current handler, close the greeting message timer and invoke the completed event. Finally create the blind transfer method which gets the blind transfer number from the call handler class. So we can work with this value in this class. Now we finish the coding of the new call handler class. Return to our call handler class to make some modifications. Call the blind transfer number method of the new call handler class with the blind transfer number parameter and subscribe on the completed event with the new call handler completed method. Now we only need to restore the subscribing of the call state change, DTMF received events, start the greeting message method and start the greeting message timer. We finish the creation of our multi-level IVR. I ran the application and opened two soft phone demos. The first one with number 1000 is for calling the IVR and the other one with number 1001 is for demonstrating the call transfer functionality. If we wrote the source code well, then we can call and control our IVR with DTMF buttons and we can reach a lower menu level with the blind transferring functionality. Now we need to add our SIP account values to the program to register the IVR. The authentication ID, username, display name, our password, domain host, and domain port. The registration succeeded we are able to call our multi-level IVR system. Introduce you the interactive voicemail aka IVR example code written with Jose P. Voice SDK. For more information about Jose P. Limited, please press button 1. Jose P. Informatics Limited is a leading mobile messaging software vendor and Jose P. Voice SIP SDK is an excellent software development fit that allows you to establish voice calls from your application easily and quickly. You do not need to have expert programming skills. With the most basic programming knowledge you will be able to create extraordinary voice solutions with this tool. You enter the lower menu. If you would like to transfer to the added number, please press button 1. By pressing button 2, you are returning to the main menu. Introduce you the interactive voicemail aka IVR example code. We finish the third video of how to develop IVR with Ozeki Voip SDK. For more information please visit www.voip-sip-sdk.com and you can contact us at info at voip-sip-sdk.com Please watch the next part of this video series where you can learn how to create an IVR system written in C-sharp by using XML codes. Thank you for watching.